Hi there, I'm Miss Pam. Today we're going to watch a couple videos that will help us master our spelling mistakes. And then we're going to have a little writing assignment. So get out a piece of paper, please, and pencil, and write your name at the top and the date. We'll be turning those in. Okay, let's get started with our first video. Do you make a lot of spelling mistakes? Do you have difficulty remembering the correct spellings of words? Well, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you an easy three-step method to improve your spelling and write correctly without making mistakes. So let's talk about that. Okay, the first step of this exercise is to find your spelling mistakes. You do this by checking your own writing. If you are a student, then I'm sure you write a lot. If you work, you might write emails or reports. So at least once per week, take your writing and try to find spelling mistakes that you have made. Now, I know that this can be difficult. You don't know what mistakes you're making. So there are two great ways to know your mistakes. The first is to ask someone else to read your work and underline or circle any errors and also give you the correct spellings. The second option is to take your writing and type it or copy paste it into Microsoft Word. The software will then underline your spelling mistakes for you and give you the corrections. This way you can identify your own errors. Okay, let's do an exercise to understand this process. Here's a short text that I wrote. There are five spelling errors in it. Stop the video, try to find the mistakes, then play the video again and check. Okay, I'm going to read the paragraph and you're going to try and identify five spelling errors in this paragraph. <clears throat> I like rock music a lot. It's definitely my favorite kind of music. I've loved it ever since I received my first rock CD as a birthday gift from my dad when I was a kid. I even played rhythm guitar in a rock band when I was in school. Nowadays, I have a tight schedule due to work, but I still find time to listen to some good old rock every day. Okay. Can you find the five spelling errors? Okay, he's gonna show us where they are, so. Okay, here are the answers. A lot should be spelled with a space. Definitely has no A, it should be an I. Received is written with EI, not IE. Rhythm needs to have an H after R. And schedule needs to start with SCH. Okay, did you find them all? All right, so like this, you identify the words that you are spelling incorrectly and learn their correct spellings. And now comes the important part. Record the correct spellings of these words. That means you should note down the correct spellings of all the words you spelled wrongly in a notebook or in a file on your computer. You should write the spellings on one side of the page and on the other, you should write the phonetic transcription. That is the same word in pronunciation symbols. This will allow you to see the difference between the spelling and the pronunciation and you will also be able to test yourself later. Now, I know that you don't know all of these symbols. That's okay. They're very easy, and you can find them by looking up each word in a dictionary. So just like I have done here, you should take all of the words, note down the correct spellings, and also note down the phonetic transcription. Finally, the last step is review the spellings regularly. You do this so you don't forget the correct spellings. Make one day of the week your spelling improvement week, maybe Saturday or Sunday. On this day, test yourself on the spellings. To do this, open your notebook and hide the spellings. Only look at the pronunciation symbols. Now, can you give me the correct spellings of these words that we just learned? 
Stop the video, try to write down the correct spellings, then play the video again and check. Okay, I'm not real familiar with um, all these phonetic symbols myself. That's something that I've never been taught, but um, I do remember what the words were. So I want you to write them down on your piece of paper, five words. And the first one is a lot, and it's two words, a space lot. Then definitely, remember there's no a, D-E-F-I-N-I-T-E-L-Y. Receive, remember, I before E except after C. So it's R E C E I V E. Rhythm has a H R H Y T H E M. And schedule S C H E D U L E. All right. Okay, here they are. Did you get them all right? So you should do this for your own spellings that you write down. By testing yourself. I told you wrong. Rhythm is R-H-Y-T-H-M. See, that's one I spell wrong. I put an E in there, and there is not one. Sorry about that. Self, you will remember the correct spellings and you will not make the same mistakes again. You should do these three steps regularly. Find your mistakes, record the correct spellings, and test yourself regularly. As you do this, you will start to collect more and more words. This means that your mistakes will reduce and eventually you will be able to write without making spelling errors. All right, if you like this lesson, Okay, so as you see, I have some spelling words that I commonly misspell, and now I will remember that rhythm does not have an E. Okay, we're going to go on to the next video. Okay. And okay, bear with me a moment. It's hard getting everything in the right place here. Okay. Not all of us were blessed with amazing spelling skills. And knowing how to spell does come in quite handy when it comes to doing English writing. So today I'm going to look at some of the places where students typically go wrong in terms of spelling and how we can rectify that so you can eliminate as many spelling errors as possible so that you can just focus on writing great essays with fantastic ideas rather than stressing about whether or not you spelt that one particular word right. Number one, don't rely on your computer. These days it's super easy just relying on our laptop to do autocorrect for us. A lot of us don't even write essays on paper anymore. And see, this is the thing that makes it a little bit tricky. Writing on the computer can make things really quick. It means you can copy and paste. It means you can cut and paste and backspace and all of this type of stuff. But what this means is that you also get those red squiggly lines where you can just right click, tap on the word that looks like it's the right one, and then your problem is resolved without you even really looking at that word. And that's one of the things that really prohibits students from improving their vocabulary. If you just learn the right way of spelling it from the get-go, then you won't have this mistake over and over again. But when it comes to a computer, if the computer can just rectify it for you every single time, you're not really going to give it much notice. So the first thing I would recommend you is either to ditch the computer or if you absolutely need to write your essay on the computer, which is okay as well, don't rely on spell check. If you do have a red squiggly line come up, look at the word yourself and 
try to figure it out on your own. This is a much more active way of learning than just passively accepting what's right and what's wrong without really thinking about it. Number two, look, cover, write, check. Back when we were in primary school, we all loved doing, actually maybe we didn't love doing it, but we all did the whole look, cover, write, check. So that's the one where you basically repeat the word over and over again using those rules, look, cover, write, check, and then by the end of it, hopefully you've practiced enough of it so that you're feeling comfortable with that word and you know how to spell it. Just because you did in primary school doesn't mean that you can't do it now. It's still the same method of learning spelling that is just as applicable to you today as it was back when you were five or six. Three, recognize the rules. There are certain rules in the English language that you can typically use, especially if there are rules where you know you always get confused. So there's the one where it's I before C except after E. So this is used in words like receive, for example. But then there are exceptions as well. So although these rules are really good, just remember that they are not faultless, they're not uh, all comprehensive and all consuming for any word that you come across. They do have their limits in terms of how far that rule stretches but it's still good to know them in the first place just so at least you can take a stab in the right direction. One of the words that I used to really struggle with was the word necessary. I just kept getting confused with how many C's and how many S's there were in the particular word but I learned to rule one collar and two sleeves. I remembered that rule ever since that day and now it's so built in within my mind that I know how to spell necessary without even needing to go back to the rule anymore. Four, write down a list of the words that you commonly get wrong. If there are words that you always get wrong, then make sure you pick up on them yourself and write them down somewhere. Write it down on a list that says commonly misspelled words and have them always there in front of you or practice them regularly, especially if you know that you're going to be using these words over and over again. So for me, one of those words was the word necessary. I really struggled with that word, but I knew that I would probably have to come and use it more often than not. So that's why I ensured that I really learned that particular word so that it just wouldn't be an issue for me whenever it came to any assessments I had. Five, know the fundamentals. You gotta know the basics of what you're studying. So if it's a particular book, know how to spell the main character's names. Know how to spell the author's name or a director's name, for example. I know that we do All About Eve by Joseph Mankiewicz and the number of times I've seen students misspell Mankiewicz's last name is, I mean, it's, it's very commonly misspelled. So if you know it's going to be one of those things, one of those words that you're going to be using in all of your essays, then make sure you know it. And there's nothing more silly than seeing a student who is not able to spell the main character's first and last name. It's just something that is expected of you. You should expect it of yourself. So make sure you cover these areas. They're really basic foundations. So those are my tips to help you with studying. If you enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up. Okay, so that was our, our video. Well, let's go to, um, let's, okay, we're there. So you already wrote down the five words that he misspelled, rhythm without an E one of them. Um, this is, I'm showing you this because it's a vocabul vocabulary word list. So I have the words on the left and then on the right I have an explanation of what they mean. So I want you to, on your paper, I want you to write down 10 vocabulary words. So using your best spelling and memory, I want you to write, go ahead and number them one through 10. And 
I want you to write it looking like, like this page with a word on the left and a description on the right. They can be any words that you want to use for a vocabulary word. So just write them down. Um, if you need to pause the video and, and think about that and finish that, that's fine. And then the last thing I want you to do is below that number one through four on your paper. And I want you to write down four words that you commonly misspell. I know my list will have rhythm in it, but um, they might also be words that you use the wrong, the wrong spelling of the word, like, like the word there, there's two of them. T-H-E-R-E -E means over there, and T-H-E-I-R means their family. So maybe that's a misspelling that you do. But go ahead and um, write down the vocabulary words that you're creating and the four misspelled words that you commonly misspell. And then you will be handing in that assignment for credit. So thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. I know I did. And I wish you a beautiful day.